like to thank our organizers uh, for organizing such a wonderful conference in this beautiful place. Uh, I, I really enjoy every moment. Uh, so uh, today I, uh, I'm going to uh, report to you of our recent results of our study on um, chiral orbital currents in a, in a colossal magnetic resistance uh, material. Um, and uh, th th this work uh, uh, has been just recently published, just a few days ago, published in Nature. Um, the, one of the important uh, things that I want to emphasize here is that control here. We control these, uh, the quantum state using very small DC current. Okay. Uh, so in, in this talk, before we talk about the results of this, I'm going to tell you how do we use small current to control lattice parameters and the physical properties as well. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. Okay, so the, um, I would like to give you just very, very brief overview uh, about the conventional magnetic resistance and also loop currents. And I'm sure that uh, you know, we, know, we know, know this very well, so I won't, I won't uh, spend too much time there. And then, uh, after that, I'm going to talk again, it's very brief, I'm going to introduce to you the control of, uh, of quantum state using small DC currents. Okay. Then I'm going to talk, share with you the details of this talk, uh, that is the, uh, using very small current to control the uh, chiral orbital currents in the classical magnetic resistance, and this material actually is this is one of the terrorites materials that we studied recently. <clears throat> so this is messed up. I didn't mean this, but then we can see this. Uh, uh, the magnetic resistance, okay, in essence, is because of the spin-dependent scatter. All the spins and the scattering will be largely reduced. Therefore, we have negative magneto resistance. So this is the essence of all these magneto, negative magneto resistance. Uh, of course, there is uh, another uh, thing that we need to mention that is a double exchange uh, in actions that it generates the um, colossal magneto resistance. Colossal magnetic resistance, especially in manganese, has been uh, actually is very the uh, popular topic in the 90s and even in early this century. Even now, we are still studying the, the, this. So, this uh, we we uh, we know this double exchange. Double exchange requires mixed valence states. Okay. Um, so, for example, here the manganese that we, if we have a manganese of three plus, then we'll have a four electrons and the magnetic four plus will have three electrons. So therefore, this generate environment for electron to hop around between different sides without cause too much energy, as long as Hong's rule number one is followed. Hong's rule number one is what? Is maximize spin. So, so therefore, this the, uh, it is this double exchange and also Young-Taylor effect that, it, that drives colossal magneto resistance in materials like this. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, for example, this is uh, here. Uh, if we do not, uh, if we do not apply magnetic field, this is resistivity as a function of temperature. If we do not apply magnetic field, we have insulating, almost insulating state. But then, if we apply, for example, seven Tesla, then we generate this metallic state. The, the realization of this metallic state is because of the full polarization that is generated by magnetic field. Okay, so again, this important keywords here is a spin polariza polarization is, is a key element for conventional classical magneto resistance. Um, and then the in most recent days that the, uh, uh, there is another type of uh, uh, classical magneto, magneto resistance uh, that is the th thallium manganese 227. And then here, as you, can, as you can see, there is no 
um, mixed valent state. But still, uh, the, uh, we have the class omega due to resistance. Of course, the, there is other reason that drives this. Besides the full spin polarization, there is another key element in this particular materials that is low charge carrier density. Okay, so there are some studies indicating that. But then what I want to emphasize is this, is that uh, polarization is essential for all conventional class omega neutral resistance. Okay, so we have, this is uh, the few uh, references that I listed here. This is actually, is a large topic that there are lots of uh, uh, papers uh, talking about this. But then in all these papers, in all these class of magneto uh, materials, cla class of magneto resistance materials, polarization is something that we have to have in order to ha achieve the magnetization. So in today's talk that I want to emphasize that we see class of magneto resistance, actually it's a seven order magnitude drop in resistivity without polarization, magnetic polarization. So that makes uh, the materials in question uh, special. So before I talk about the, uh, the details of our results, I want to introduce the second concept involved in this, this study, that is loop currents. Or we call it, we, or we call it the intra-unit cell loop currents, or chiral orbital currents, or loop currents. This is the same thing. So what is this? What this means is that there is a spontaneous charge current running, for example, in the uh, around the edges of the of the octahedra. This concept was first introduced by Vama, C. M. Vama, addressing the complicated phases in the in the cuprates. So there is a spontaneous charge current running along the uh, between the copper and oxygen. Uh, orbitals, okay? So this arrows indi indicating the direction of the loop currents, whereas this, uh, this arrows indicating the moments generated by, orbital moments generated by the, uh, this loop currents. Okay, so this is the very first attempt uh, uh, by, uh, by Obama uh, for, for uh, corporate uh, superconductivity. And then later on, this concept, loop current concept, was invoked for investigation of other materials, for example, uh, ruthenates. Uh, the uh, uh, ruthenates, which is a very strong spin orbit, uh, uh, the uh, coupled materials, and it's been widely and extensively studied. So this is a, the recent work in, uh, I think the first paper was published in 2016, indicating hidden order in this compound. And then, then there is some follow-up studies indicating that there is indeed, there is orbital moments generated by loop currents. And, uh, and the more recently, uh, there, is a, there, there is a report uh, of, uh, of loop currents uh, uh, observed in the uh, Kagami superconductor materials, such as this, or Kagami metals, or Kagami magnets. Uh, so the, um, so this is, is one of the examples, and uh, there, are, there are several uh, recent, uh, this is not so recent, yeah, recent publications indicating the, uh, the occurrence of loop currents in these materials. But notice here, all, this, all these materials are not magnetic ordered here, okay? And then, and then more recently, there, there are some science paper reporting the uh, orbital ferromagnetism in the, in, in the graphene or, or twisted bilayer graphemes. So this is one of the, this is how effect as a function of field uh, generate this, uh, this figures. As we know that graphene does not have magnetic moment, but then it has very strong Hall uh, effect. So these are the, uh, these are the few examples that indicating that uh, the um, loop currents or chiral uh, loop currents may be widespread beyond materials that we just mentioned. Uh, but then what I want to emphasize here is that there is no report on the microscopic transport phenomena related to loop currents that also coexist with the uh, long range magnetic order. Okay. And then so, so our study just provide this uh, first very such case. So where the, um, the loop currents drive class of magnetic resistance in the anti, uh, in the ferry magnetic materials of this. 
Okay. And then the way that we control or probe this material is use, using very small DC current as a stimulus. So before we talk about these results, let me just give you one slide or two to introduce to you how small current can control structure and the magnetic properties. So this is our, our first attempt in, 19, in 2018. We, uh, we use very small DC current to control this uh, strong, the, uh, the uh, spin orbit coupled materials of this. And this is uh, the materials probably we, uh, we know well, that this is uh, the, the physical properties of this material of the iridase is driven by a combined effect of uh, spin orbit interactions and also Coulomb interactions. Um, so it has all kinds of interesting phenomena and uh, many of them are still not so well understood. We apply current to change, to control this. So what we found is that the, uh, the, the small DC current can actually effectively alter the lattice. So for example, here this is a cartoon my student made for me. So when you turn on current, the canting or this distortion becomes relaxed. Uh, and also the lattice becomes more extended. And as a result, since there is a strong spin orbit coupling, so if when lattice changes, everything else changes too. So, uh, so we report this in uh, 2000, uh, 2018. And then we follow up, uh, the, we use this technique to study other materials as well. And so based on our study, we, uh, we have seen a few um, empirical trends. So these are the few. So in order, so there, is a few, there are a few essential conditions for us to effectively control uh, structure and the physical properties using small currents. So that is one, the materials should have a strong magnetoelastic coupling or spin orbit interactions. The other is that the, the materials should have a distorted uh, crystal or magnetic uh, structures. You know, this, uh, this is a, probably you cannot see this well. This is our yeah, single crystal X-ray diffractometer. And um, we, we developed the, a technique where we can control the, um, the we, can, we can study crystal structures as a function of current, okay? And of, of, uh, as well as temperature. So, uh, so this is uh, one of the uh, setups that, uh, that uh, we actually uh, developed. Um, and then, so we, uh, we have a done, uh, used this technique to study other materials, um, and uh, it, is, uh, it is apparently is very, very uh, effective. And then the, the, the today's topic is the most, most recent example where we use very small current to control the uh, quantum states here. Uh, so here is, um, Oh, the other thing that uh, I want to emphasize is that the heating, okay, dual heating, is, 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 this is something that is always there. So we are very much mindful that dual heating has to be addressed. So we want to make sure that the, everything that we have seen is intrinsic, not the spurious behavior. Okay, so we, uh, this community had some bad, unfortunate examples before. So we have been very careful uh, in terms of addressing dual heating. Okay. Um, so this is the work that is recently we use small current to, uh, to control colossal magneto resistance uh, and in this material, okay. Um, this is a, it's a, it's a, it's a very good that, that this paper was, uh, was published there in October 12th, so, so today is uh, just a few days ago. Um, so this material actually shows a wide range of the striking phenomenon. So let me first summarize what we have seen. Then we, uh, then we talk about the details. Um, as we mentioned earlier, that this, uh, oops, so this, uh, this colossal magneto resistance occurs only when magnetic field is applied along the hot axis where spin orbit where uh, the uh, magnetic polarization is absent. Okay. Um, and uh, also, this colossal magnetoresistance 
is extremely sensitive to small current. So for those who studied clasomagneto resistance would know that this is, a, this is something unusual. Because the clasomagneto resistance do not, uh, is not sensitive to the size of the current, okay, as long as it's not huge. But then we're talking about very small DC current. So this is another thing that is striking. Uh, the other thing is that the, uh, we've seen the anomalous IV characteristic. And one of them is that the Josephson effect. You know, we know this is not superconductor. This is an insulator without magnetic field. Even applied magnetic field is metal, it is not superconduct. But it has very robust Josephson effect in this compound. Now this is, to this day, we still don't understand quite uh, uh, well why, why this happens. And uh, there is a very long time dependent um, first order, always first order, bistable switching. And then this switching uh, very often takes a second or minutes to occur. You know, this is something that is very striking as well, because we know that the time scale set by electrons or spins normally is picosecond at most. But this is real time. We can see this in seconds or minutes. Okay, so these are the few things that at first I would like to summarize before we talk about the details. Um, so this is the structure. Okay, so um, the structure is trigonal uh, structure, and then there is a two inequivalent manganese sides. The, uh, this is MN1, this, and MN2 is, is, is here, okay. And so that's why it generates ferromagnetic state, not antiferromagnetic state. And uh, the, um, the AB plane forms this uh, trimer uh, uh, honeycomb structures. Okay, so that's this. Now this is, a, this is a, a neutron diffraction at a low temperature, 50 Kelvin. There is no indication that there is a, there is a structure change below uh, 70, 78 Kelvin, which is the Curie temperature. Um, one other thing that I want to point out is that uh, the, here in this compound, manganese is two plus. So that means we have a 5D electrons. 5D electrons is a halfway field. A shell, so that means the orbital moment should be zero. L should be zero. Okay, so if L is zero, then you do not expect you expect large, uh, do not expect spin orbit interaction at all. Then if you don't have spin orbit interactions, you do not expect anisotropy. But we've seen all of this, so uh, so we'll talk about this. <coughs> um, so this is uh, first of all this. Uh, this is the structure, TC is here. So if uh, we say easy axis, that means it's in the, in the, along the A, A axis, okay. Hard axis is C axis, okay. And uh, the, 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 the system, now we know uh, through our recent neutron data, we know there is a there's non-collinear magnetic configuration here. We talk about this and it's counted. Um, so uh, let's see, the, the um, this, this is the work that we done before this work. Uh, this, this, paper is, uh, this paper was first published in, uh, in, uh, in Physical Review B letters, um, uh, indicating that uh, resistivity drops by seven, seven order of magnitude, only one when we apply magnetic field along C axis, which is this hard <laughs> axis. Okay, so you can see that this, this change, this kink indicating the, the, this, this uh, second order transition. And then if you look at the, uh, this, if you look at the iso, th the uh, as a resistivity, this is the uh, class of magneto resistance ratio as a function of magnetic field. So what you can see is this. This is a little bit busy. So, uh, uh, but let's, let's just first look at the, the dash lines. Okay, this dash lines, which is this magnetization. So the red ones, indicating easy axis. So in other words, we apply magnetic field along this axis. So what we see here is that the magnetization saturates rapidly at a very small field. Okay, so that's saturation. <coughs> but then if you apply magnetic field along C axis, magnetization increases very gradually. Uh, and uh, the highest TC field that we applied is 14 Tesla. So even at 14 Tesla, this uh, MC magnetization along C axis is still smaller 
than the than that of the a axis okay so so this uh, this is a in, in, this is a very important clue that something is unusual going on and then the other thing is that uh, as we said earlier that l equals 0 if it is for for magnitude 2 plus but then how come we have such a large anisotropy okay um, this work was later confirmed uh, by another group and then they managed to publish this in nature uh, but then uh, similar results um, so so this is a the early study that we have. So apparently there were lots of unanswered questions. So when we went down, okay. Um, oh, so here this is a detail. So if if magnetic field is along a axis, easy axis, we have at most uh, a twenty percent of a reduction in resistivity. But then if it is uh, along hot axis, it is about seven orders of magnitude drop. This is a, this is resistivity solid lines are resistivity. Um, and then it is also very anisotropic, as we said earlier. So in this plot, you can see that this, uh, this uh, theta is, uh, is, uh, is an angle between magnetic field and the c-axis, hot axis. So if uh, theta equals 0, that means magnetic field is along the c-axis. So that means resistivity here is very low here. But then if you rotate this magnetic field or rotate sample in, in, in reality, uh, away from magnetic field, uh, so then, for example, at the A axis, then this resistivity is much larger. So you can see this loop is very, is a, is a very anisotropic. So this is actually is a direct, the, uh, the, the measure of anisotropy. So, so and the, anisotropic, the, anisot the anisotropy field is larger than 13 Tesla. But then, as we said earlier, L equals zero, why is this? Okay, so that's something very, uh, unusual. Um, then uh, this is early, our early neutron data. Uh, the, on this side, it is sh um, as a function of field. This is resistivity. So you can see that the resistivity drops uh, rapidly. And then around the three Tesla, we have already reached the lowest uh, resistance. But then if we measure uh, the, the the moments, okay, this is mag the moments due to manganese. So you can see, this is the theta, the change. I can see here, this, I don't know if you can see this, but then the theta defined as the angle between the, the, uh, the spin and the A axis. So uh, when, when, you, when we apply magnetic field along C axis, this, uh, this, 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 this is canted spin gradually the uh, turn along with the c-axis. But then the speed uh, or the rate of this change is very slow, OK? Um, we, uh, we then recently we've managed to finish all the measurements. So you can notice the blue ones. This is the this doped sample. For this red curve, that is this. So you can see that the, the spin tilts very slowly, OK? So this it tells us that the magnetic spin alone cannot explain the resistivity that we're showing here. Because resistivity already saturated here. I mean, drops and saturated below four Tesla. But then um, this, uh, this has been, um, the, uh, uh, as this, this by the way, as this neutron data indicating that the spin rotation along the magnetic field is very slow. So this is another, um, another indicator or reminder that tells us that there is something else going on in the system. Uh, this is more detailed. Uh, so the, actually, the spin is not only canted within the AB plan, but also tilt along C axis. Okay. Unfortunately, this project is not very clear. So, but then you, you see the ideas here. Um, so th this is what I want to emphasize, that the spin rotates rotate only gradually with a magnetic field along C axis. And uh, this is inconsistent with rapid occurrence of the, uh, of the uh, CMR when magnetic field is applied along C-axis. So that's indicated here. So that's our motivation for the next study. So uh, oh, the other uh, important information here is this. As we said that the, uh, this uh, magnetic ion is two plus. And uh, so 
then we should expect five Bohr magneton per, per ion. But here, the in neutron data tells us, because this is two inequivalent uh, magnet size, so one is 4.55, the other is 4.2. So that means we are missing some uh, moments here. Okay, uh, we'll see that. So that means what? So that means the measured moment smaller than five, indicating there was some partial cancellation, and that this cancellation is most likely coming from the orbital moment generated by the loop current. <clears throat> so this is the loop currents that we proposed. Um, it, it has a lot of details here, more details here, but then you can see that all this arrow indicating the currents, okay, the currents that uh, along, along the edges of the octahedra, manganese and tellurium uh, octahedra. Okay, so it along all these edges, but then the most dominant, the current, loop currents in this case, is AB plane. So that means this, okay, AB plane, loop currents. That that's actually flows along the edges of the, uh, of the manganese tellurium uh, octahedra. So we use different color, red and, and the blue and, and the purple, to indicate the different sites of the loop current and the different magnitude of currents. Um, and then the current certainly generates the moment. This moment is a CX, mostly a C axis orbital moment. Okay, C axis, recall, is hot axis. Okay, so that we already mentioned this many times. And then this C axis moment, uh, orbital moment, actually strongly coupled with magnetic spin. That generates spin orbit coupling in a very unusual way. So that may explain why we've seen such a large anisotropy in magnetization, given that L equals zero for M uh, two plus, uh, two for, for M two plus, M N two plus. So this, so this gives us uh, unusual spin orbit coupling that is uh, strong. So that is reflected in magnetization and other uh, uh, physical properties. <coughs> um, so how this works, why loop currents can, re can generate colossal magnetic resistance? So I, I think this, is a, this picture is, a, I, I draw just before I came here, so that's why I was getting late. Uh, <laughs> it's a, we, we can see this, dom this uh, loop currents as domain, okay, just domain. So without magnetic field applied uh, along C-axis, and in this domain, as we said, that the most the dominant loop currents are within the AB plane. So let's just consider an AB plane. But without magnetic field, the, the loop currents can run the clockwise or counterclockwise, and then generates moment that points to the opposite directions. So then you can see this as a domain. So once you have so many domains, when electrons are going through, there are so many, there's so much scatterings that actually generates high resistance. So that's why this material is basically insulated. So this is when the um, magnetic field is zero, so we have disordered circulation domains. But then um, if we apply magnetic field along C axis, then what happens is that uh, th then we have an ordered circulation domain. So in other words, this magnetic field along C axis only encourage one domain to grow, whereas the other domain, for example here, this is a, the circulation along the is counterclockwise will be favored, so it will expand. But then the other direction circulation, for example, the clockwise uh, circulation will be uh, will shrunk or, or vanish. So as a result, we have this ordered domain. So when electrons are going through uh, this uh, this materials, the the uh, scattering is largely reduced, and then it induces so much, it generates there are actually seven orders of magnitude. Um, uh, reduction. Okay, so this is actually a very superficial uh, explanation. But then, if you uh, care about the details, here this is the reference. Uh, that's just uh, yeah, so you can find it. Um, so the um, so then uh, so this is a this is a, the idea about the loop currents. And then let's see details a little bit of details more here. So now we, uh, as we said in earlier, that we use small current to control quantum states. So here is another example here. So this is the resistivity. 
as a function of temperature without magnetic field. But then we change the, the current we apply. Right? So um, the, this is that we started with, for example, 10 nanometer, uh, nano uh, uh, am, uh, amps. And then, and then we change it to micron and, and the milli amps and so on and so forth. So you can see that at the low temperature, actually resistivity drops by six orders of magnitude. Okay, that's also actually quite decent. But then let's focus, let's focus on this area. Okay, so that's this. So this area, so that is this, you cannot see the detail. So this, this area, you can see that the, when the current is micron, here, uh, this uh, we have a peak near the uh, Curie, temp uh, Curie uh, temperature. It is rounded here, so indicating second order transition. But then, if you apply one milliamps, uh, then this peak drops uh, quite significantly. But then, still, this peak notice here is still rounded, indicating this st remains second order transition. But then, if you apply 1.5 milliamps. So then all of a sudden, of course, the peak shifts to the further lower temperature, but then the drop becomes abrupt, indicating occurrence of first order transition. And then if you slightly increase to 1.8 milliamps, and then this peak is further dropped to the lower temperature, and then this becomes even more abrupt. But then when we further increase the current to two milliamps, and then this first order transition is gone. Okay, so that means S this small current, for us who do experiments, we know that the, in normal cases, two milliamps, there is no difference between two milliamps and one milliamps, okay, for, for transport measurements. But here, apparently, it's extremely sensitive to that. So that means here, in this case, that the magnet, the current can effectively change exchange coupling in these materials, okay. Um, but then, at the same time, we also notice that in this region, in this region, the current actually cannot change resistivity value that effectively. So you can see this two dashed line indicating the, the areas where the, the value right above TC and right below TC is actually quite remains essential unchanged. Okay, so, so this is something that I want to point out. And, um, and then we also did a magnetization with current, so we can we can measure simultaneous simultane, simultaneous measure resistivity and the magnetization with current. So this is the this is the magnetization here. So uh, without current, TC is somewhere here. Uh, it's that's expected. But then if we apply one milliamps, TC drops to sixty. So if we apply one point eight, uh, it drops to lower temperature, just like that. But then. Uh, it, what's important here is that uh, 1.8 and 1.5, we see first order transition as well here. So notice here that the first order transition. So, so this means when current exceeding certain threshold, the first or second order transition becomes first order transition. So that means there is something really fundamental going on. And then once we apply two milliamps, there's nothing going, there's nothing. So uh, as we said here, then when, if we apply two milliamps, there is, there is no transition anymore. Okay, so then um, we, um, what, okay, hold on. So then we, uh, this is without, this is three boxes without uh, field. So now we apply field. So this is again along C axis. So the magnetic field effect, is pull this TC back to the higher temperatures. Uh, so we see that. And then this is at the different current. And uh, so we can see that the colossal magnetic resistance is clear. This is a linear scale, but then so you can see that the, there are several orders of magnitude change. But when the current is larger than two milliamps, for example, five milliamps here, there is no more colossal magnetic resistance. So, and of course, 10 is, there is gone. So magnetic resistance disappeared once the, uh, uh, when the current is larger than two milliamps, okay, in this, in this particular case. So these are very unusual. So for those who studied 
um, the uh, transport properties, the, the we with the, uh, the uh, should appreciate the this unusual behavior. That is, that given this materials, that is uh, that is uh, so sensitive to small changes in current. Um, so this is a summarize of the of this uh, class of magneto resistance and the TC. So what it, what this shows, this is based on the previous data. So what it shows here, uh, when the current is higher than two milliamps, uh, both the castle magneto resistance and also TC disappear. Okay, so this is the indication that uh, the the uh, TC or castle magneto resistance, and we believe is driven by uh, loop currents, are strongly coupled to the TC or magnetic moments of from mag uh, from magnetic ions. And so, as I mentioned earlier, that we also see very unusual IV characteristic, okay? And uh, we also see Josephson-like effect. So this is the overall picture. So then we, uh, if you see this, this is a zoom in picture. You can see that this is I, this is a V, current voltage. So at very small current, the, 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 uh, the Ohm's law is, is obeyed, but then when the current is slightly larger, now we see this back, this turn here, this turning point here, indicating occurrence of negative differential resistance, okay? By the way, this differential, ne negative differential resistance is a very desirable phenomenon for many of these devices, electronic devices. Uh, it's not so common, but then here happens here. As we further increase current here, then the system experiences a first order transition from here to here. This current increase is tiny, but the resistivity, but the voltage jump is huge here, okay. Uh, the, uh, this different color in indicating different uh, temperature. So this is all without magnetic field. So if then if we apply magnetic field uh, again along C axis, what happens here is that the, let's look at the detail here. So then this first, the, uh, Negative, uh, negative differential resistance is gone. But then it is replaced by this vertical line. This is at the three Tesla. Seven Tesla, it is, it is here. So the current changes by this much, but the voltage is almost zero here. So in other words, they, if, you, if you evaluate delta V over delta I, it is almost zero. So this is exactly Josephson effect. But we know that there is no superconducting elements involved here. So then yet it is very robust. So when you apply uh, increased magnetic field, this region becomes even larger, okay. So this is another uh, interesting, uh, or actually just striking behavior that we've seen. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, so uh, no, I, I know my time is up, so uh, I, I'm, I'm almost done. So then there's the last piece of the interesting uh, behavior that is, uh, that is uh, first order bistable switching. So this is a voltage and this time, okay? So if we apply, so for example, uh, current to, this, to the sample, if the current is at 2.030 milliamps, nothing happens. But then if you apply current, slightly increased current to 2.035 milliamps, then all of a sudden at the, at the mark of nine seconds, there is abrupt jump and then spike here and then stabilize here. So as, as you further increase the current slightly, and then the time, delay time is, is shorter, but then still here. They all end up here, okay? So that's why we call it bi-stable switching, but their time is changing as we slightly increase the current. So this change from here to here is about 30%, okay? Even the current here change is, is less than 2.2%. Uh, but then if we apply magnetic field along C-axis again, then this time, this, uh, this delay becomes even longer. This is, for, exa for example, this takes probably almost two minutes to happen. And then the jump is 2,000%, okay? And then the rest is similar to that. But then well, what I want to say here is that this is happens only when magnetic field is par parallel to C-axis. But then if you apply magnetic field along A-axis, which is easy axis, then the behavior becomes more or less normal, 
okay, there, there, there's no such switching anymore. We still have seen this little bit increase indicating there is still some remnant uh, jumping here, but then overall, the system becomes, behaves normally, okay, more or less normally. This is, a, this is one magnetic field uh, parallel to the axis. And then our argument is that uh, when you apply magnetic field along the c-axis, this uh, magnetic field strongly coupled to the c-axis orbital moment, therefore enhances the C loop current state and uh, everything else. But then if you apply magnetic field along the a-axis, which is uh, perpendicular to, the, to this uh, uh, c-axis orbital moment, that destroys the, uh, the existence a destroyed uh, loop current state. Um, so, and there are there lots of arguments. So, one last slide that I want to show here that the why it takes so long for the switching to happen. So, we, so for this, we studied the, um, we also measured magneto striction uh, uh, measurements. So, we measure A axis expansion with magnetic field. So, you can see that the, if we apply magnetic field along C axis, the A axis, A axis expand very significantly. But then if, you, uh, if we apply magnetic field along A axis, this A axis remain essentially unchanged. Okay, so, you know, I have lots to say, but one thing that I want to say is that, as we said, this is a loop currents. Loop currents extend over multiple atomic sides. So when it changes, it actually involves multiple atomic sides. So this is a, the time scale set by this type of change is very different from the time scale that is set by electrons or spins, which takes picoseconds to happen at most, but this takes much longer time. And then uh, we, uh, we, our follow-up study uh, actually indicating this argument is consistent uh, with this. So if we dope germanium, we expand, uh, we expand the uh, unit cell, so we enhance uh, colossal magnetic resistance but then we dope selenium, we actually reduced the, uh, uh, the unit cell, so we reduced the effect of colossal magnetic resistance. And on the other hand, if we, you measure magnetization, you can see that the magnetization actually is smaller for germanium doped sample, which is corresponding to larger colossal magnetic resistance. And the selenium becomes even stronger magnetically, but then colossal magnetic resistance becomes weaker. Okay. Um, I, uh, I, I know I run on my time, this is little details, and actually the moment for this is much smaller now. Um, so that is indication there is a stronger cancellation uh, of, the, of the observed moment due to the uh, uh, C-axis orbital moment. So uh, I, I will leave this here, my time is up. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. So, yeah. Thank you yeah. 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 Your very nice results, by the way. Uh, your uh, explanation relies essentially on the existence of loop currents, but these have been quite controversial. Some experiments with NMR or neutrons. So, what do you yes. comment on that? The comments is that uh, this is an attempt to understand something that we don't understand. Um, the um, loop currents, loop current alone, is hard to directly measure, right? Because, um, but then this piece of study indicate, you know current, so sensitive to the current, is an is a, is a indication, maybe yeah. indirectly, that they uh, suggest that the loop current or internal currents may play a role. It's like loop. It's like loop. It should be a loop. It's more or less what they say loop current. Yeah. So, yeah. So, of course, the, uh, we, we, are, we are doing STM uh, measurements in the field at the low temperature. There's a challenge because this material is a three-dimensional material. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and also, we are trying to do uh, curve, uh, the measurements, curve effect measurements, and then that could uh, help us confirm. This is even more challenging. So. Uh, yes, 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 <laughs> right. So uh, we did the easy work. So uh, the other guy is who is doing tough work. Yes, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. So very quick question, because we have to, to, to make this room free for the session. Yeah. No, very uh, short question. So, do you see hysteresis uh, when you change uh, the uh, resistance? Time. time. Resi yeah. oh. uh, if it's time, if you're talking about time dependence, yeah. 
That, yes, there are very strong hysteresis, uh, hysteresis. So of course, you know, you cannot measure hysteresis in time, right? Yeah. Reverse, but then we gradually reduce the current. We see that uh, there is a there is very uh, de long, long delay of recovering the initial value. Yeah. Yeah. So I think unfortunately we have to close. This oh, I, yeah. Thank yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow. So, okay, so I passed the exam. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay.